In this video, we're going to start the last chapter um, of the book and the last chapter of the Junior Cert course for you, which is chapter 19, Geometry 2. So again, the first section of the chapter is always kind of a revision of what you've done last year, and that's what a lot of the kind of this year is. It's a revision of what you've done last year and then adding slightly trickier bits onto it. So I'm just going to go through some of the key terms, and these are in your textbook as well, so make sure you read the first couple of pages of this chapter in your textbook and take notes. And you can pause the video and take notes as you need to as well. So some key terms and words you need to know. First of all, you need to know what an axiom is. And an axiom is a rule or a statement that we accept as true without any proof. So an example of an axiom would be if we have a straight angle, we know that one, a straight angle is 180 degrees. We can't prove that. That's something that we know to be true because we've set it as that. We've said that a straight angle is 180 degrees. We've defined a degree and we've called this 180. So that's an example of an axiom. A theorem then is a rule or a statement that you may be able to prove following a certain step set, certain number of logical steps, or by using a previous theorem or axiom. So lots of the theorems you use axioms to prove them. And it's a proof is mentioned this, so you might use a proof to kind of help you prove that a theorem is true. So an example here might be, well, an example of a theorem would be that the three angles in a triangle one, two, three, angle one plus angle two plus angle three add up to 180 degrees. Now, why is that not an axiom and why is it a theorem? Well, it's a theorem because we can prove it using logical steps, including our axiom that I've just mentioned. So here's the, the proof for it. If we draw a triangle and we draw a line on the top, which is parallel to the bottom line of the triangle, well, we can say that uh, angle 1 plus 5 plus 4 equals 180 degrees because it's a straight angle. That's our axiom. We know that to be true. We can say that angle 4 is equal to angle 2 because they're alternate angles. Our Z. Angle 5 is equal to angle 3, again, because they're alternate angles. So therefore, we can say that angles 1 4 and 5 equals angles 1, 2 and 3. So basically the angles inside the triangle equal the angles outside the triangle, which means they equal 180 degrees. So we're proving that the three angles in a triangle add up to 180 by using our axioms. A corollary then is a statement that follows readily from a previous theorem. Um, so an example of a corollary is you might remember we did a theorem before where we said this angle was twice this angle and when we kind of did it we looked at examples which were a bit more looked a bit like this and it was if this is a this angle here must be 2a so well we've another kind of thing we can say from that without having to prove anything else that this angle if you form a triangle in a semicircle the angle formed at the at the edge of the circle must always be 90 degrees because this angle would always be 180 degrees. So again, we've seen the two of these before. I'm just kind of recapping very quickly. The converse of a statement then is formed by reversing the order. So for example, if P, then Q, then if Q, then P. Um, I'm trying to think of an example for that. Converse of them. If angle A equals angle B, then angle B equals angle A. So something like that would be the converse. And finally, employs is a term we use in a proof when we write down a fact or conclusion that follows from a previous statement. So you're going to see me using this in the couple of examples I'm going to do. But one important thing to know is that the symbol for implies is an arrow like that, where you have two lines and an arrow hit. So make sure you know that one because you'll be using that a lot in this chapter. So I'm going to do two example proofs, and these are the type of questions you get in this chapter. So these are kind of easy ones, but the, the point, the reason I'm showing them to you is to kind of show you how you structure your answer for proof and the way they want you to write down your answers. So here's a question. Prove that triangle ABC is equal to triangle DEF, or is congruent to triangle DEF. Now, in order, order to answer the question, first of all, you need to know what congruent means. And remember, congruent means identical. They're the same. So if they're identical, all three angles are the same and all three sides are the same. 
but there's a different way to prove prove uh, triangles are congruent. You don't have to prove that all three sides are the same. One way of proving it is that all three sides are the same, and we call that SSS, all three sides. Another way of proving it is if all three angles are the same, we call that AAA. You can prove it by showing that two sides and an angle between them are the same, SAS, or two angles and a side between them are the same, ASA. And we've looked at these before as well. But these are four of the ways you can prove that two triangles are identical. So all we need to do is use the information they've given us in the picture to prove one of these situations. And then that therefore shows that they're congruent. So what can we say? Well, we can say that length AC is equal to length DF. Because on the diagram, it might be hard to see there's a line there and there's a line there. So this is how we write the length as well. We put a bar beside it. So make sure you use the correct notation. And what we do is we write beside that how we know that. And we know that because it's given in the question. So we just write given. If you look at the diagram, we can see that this angle and this angle are the same. So how do we write that? Well, the size of angle BAC is equal to the size of angle EDF, given. We know that this angle is the same as this angle. So the size of angle BCA equals the size of angle EFD. How do we know that? It's given. So I'm kind of just showing you the notation here, and this is what you have to do. And you might say, why are you writing all this down? Isn't it kind of obvious from the diagram or from the diagram they give you? But you have to. This is how you structure your questions. So now from this, we have... We have a side, a side, and we have angles on each side. So this is this one. An angle is the same as uh, the corresponding angle of one triangle is the same as the other one, the side in between them, and the next angle. So all we can do then is say this implies, and that's our symbol for implies, that triangle ABC is equal to triangle DEF, and what I'd write is I'd write ASA there, angle, side, angle. And that's it. That's the question done. Now, often you'll see they write QED at the end, and that's Latin, and it means what was to be proven or something like that. But you don't have to write that, but you'll see it in your textbook, and that's what it means. It's just I've proved what they've asked me to prove. So that's how you structure the questions. I'm going to do one more, and this is slightly trickier, but this is uh, another kind of example of the notation. So prove the triangle PQR is similar to triangle RST. Now remember, angle, or triangles are similar if they have two pairs of equal angles. Really, they're similar if all three angles are the same. So they can have all three angles the same, but they can have different lengths, but they're similar. Uh, but in order to prove that all three angles are the same, you just need to prove that two pairs are the same because, well, two two angles and uh, two sets of triangles are the same, then the third one must be the same because all angles add up to 180 degrees. So what can we say from the pic picture? Well, we can say that PQ is parallel, and that's the symbol for parallel, to ST, given. Now that's the only marking that's really given, so now we have to kind of figure out the rest ourselves. Well, if you look here, we have an X shape which means that that angle and that angle must be the same. So we could say angle P or Q is equal to angle S or T. And that hasn't been given explicitly. They haven't marked that those angles, angles are the same. So we need to say how we proved that. And we proved it because they are vertically opposite angles. Vertically opposite angles. Now next one. Well because we know these two are parallel, if you look at this we have these two lines are parallel, we have a kind of a Z shape. And since we have a Z shape, that angle there must be equal to that angle there. So we can say angle RST is equal to angle RQP. Why? They are alternate angles alternate angles. 
And likewise, we could actually go and say, well, look at the z in this angle or this direction as well. We could say that this angle equals this angle. So lastly, we could say angle QPR equals angle RST. Again, alternate angles. So we've actually proved that all three angles are the same. We didn't need to do that, but all of these facts imply, and remember this is how you finish your questions, that triangle PQR is equal to triangle RST. And that's our answer. And sometimes, as I said, you see QED written at the end. That is what they wanted us to prove. So what's important that you take away from this lesson is how you write down your answers. And it seems simple with these easier questions, but you have to just make sure you write down all the bits of information you can and explain where you got each piece of information.